Hi guys, today we're going to look at covalent bonding, which is another type of bonding that I'm going to go over. We've looked at ionic so far, today's lesson is covalent, and then we have metallic bonding as well to have a look at. So on your screen you can see a periodic table with the group numbers along the top. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 0, and the period numbers down the side. So covalent bonding only occurs between non-metals, between atoms of non-metals. So we're going to be looking at the elements which are on the right of this little staircase. So we're going to look at the bonding between atoms of non-metals. Ionic bonding, which we did the other week, was the bonding between a metal and a non-metal. So what actually is it? So on your right hand side you can see hydrogen chloride and you can see the bonding between the two atoms. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. One covalent bond is when a pair of electrons is shared between the two atoms. So ionic bonding was the transfer of electrons between atoms. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons. So you can see on that picture, the hydrogen and the chlorine are sharing a pair of electrons on their outer shell. In bonding, we only really are interested in the outer shells. So in a minute, we're going to look at different molecules and we're only going to look at the outer shells. Some examples we're going to look at are oxygen, chlorine and water. So both atoms in the bond end up with one extra electron in their outer shell. So if we look at hydrogen, we know hydrogen only originally has one electron as an atom. Chlorine has seven electrons in its outer shell. The hydrogen now shares an additional electron, so it has two. It can only ever have two in its outer shell. As in the first shell, we can only fit two electrons. Chlorine, you can see then, it now has eight. That's the maximum number it can have. It is sharing that electron with the hydrogen. So let's look at that hydrogen chloride, HCl. As I said before, the hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell and chlorine has seven. We're going to look at molecules that we class as simple molecular substances. So some of the examples that I'm going to go through and that you're going to try yourself, we call simple molecular substances because there's only a couple of atoms involved in the molecules. So hydrogen chloride. On your screen, you can see two outer shells. Hydrogen is in group one. So we're going to put that one electron on the outer shell. Chlorine is in group seven. So we know it has seven outer electrons. And the position you put the electrons on the outer shell is really, really important. So my first one, I'm going to put it 12 o'clock. The second electron, I'm going to put it three o'clock. The third electron, I'm going to put it six o'clock. The fourth electron, I'm going to put it nine o'clock. And I'm going to work my way back around to fit the remaining three electrons in. So my fifth one's going to go at 12 o'clock again. My sixth one is going to go at three o'clock. And my seventh and final electron is going to go at six o'clock. You can see here in these two pictures, the hydrogen has one lone electron who wants to be in a pair and chlorine has one lone electron. We're going to look at these lone electrons. But as I said, it's really important the way you place your electrons to figure out where the lone electrons are. So now we're going to look at a video of how we turn a single atom of hydrogen and a single atom of chlorine into the full final covalent bonding structure. So as you can see, I've got my two atoms, my hydrogen and my chlorine. We need to 
overlap these outer shells. I've got my hydrogen, I've got my chlorine. So I'm going to take my outer electron of hydrogen and place that in the overlap. I can tick it off as I've used it. I'm now going to place my outer electron, my single lone electron in the overlap for chlorine. We now need to place the remaining electrons from chlorine around the outer shell of chlorine. Chlorine has to have eight electrons. This is now complete. We can double check. Hydrogen has the two electrons in its outer shell from the outer shell. Chlorine has eight, the six on its outer shell, and then the two in the middle. Six plus two is eight. So now you can see that covalent bonding again on your screen. Always just double check that you've got the right amount of electrons. So again, we look at the hydrogen. It can only have two. And it's got the two in the overlap. Chlorine has eight. It has six on its outer, outer shell. And it has the two it's sharing on the overlap in the middle. So we're going to look at nitrogen. You can see here that I've actually got three pairs of electrons in my overlap. We're going to get to how we do that in a moment. As there are three pairs of electrons being shared, we say nitrogen has a triple bond. There are three covalent bonds. If we go back to our definition at the start, one covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. So nitrogen is in group five. So one atom of nitrogen will have five electrons. So we're going to watch a video of how we get to the final covalent bonded structure of nitrogen. On your screen now, you can see the two outer shells. There's no electrons yet. And I'm just going to go over how I'm going to put my electrons on the outer shell following that clockwise direction. It's really important that I get the correct amount of unpaired electrons. So as I said, five electrons. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and repeated. So I'm going to take my two atoms, overlap them in the middle so I can put my shared electrons. Now I'm going to look at my unpaired electrons. So I'm going to take that first nitrogen, pop it in the middle. And take the second unpaired electron, pop it in the shared area. I'm going to take that final one on that first nitrogen. I'm going to do the same for the other nitrogen. That first electron, the unshared, is now in the middle. The second lone electron. It's now going in the middle. And that final one. You can now see where I get my three pairs of electrons. But I need to put the remaining electrons on the outer shells. So that first one still has two remaining. So it goes on the outer shell. The second right hand side atom of nitrogen still has two electrons. So they go on that outer shell. Each nitrogen needs eight electrons. So the one on the left has six in the middle and two on the outside, making eight. If we look at just the right-hand side nitrogen, it has two on the outside and the six it's shown in the middle. So six plus two is eight. So your first task 
is to complete the dot cross diagram for ammonia. We call these dot cross diagrams as one atom will show the electrons as a dot and the other will show it as crosses. So on your screen, you can see the individual atoms and I've already drawn out the electrons for each. In the middle of the screen, you can see the arrangement of the atoms. So all you need to do is copy the arrangement and place the electrons in the correct space. So take your hydrogens. Where will that those lone electrons go? Look at your nitrogen. Look at where your pair is and look at where your lone electrons are. Pause the video, draw this out and then move on. So your task two is to continue to do this. Draw the dot cross diagrams for the following molecules. Use the molecular formula given to determine how many atoms of each element you need. So by that I mean hydrogen, H2, only has two atoms of hydrogen. So you're only going to need to draw two circles. Chlorine, Cl2, two atoms of chlorine, so you only need two circles to outer shells of chlorine. Water, the formula is H2O, so there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. On the right hand side you can see three circles. That arrangement is the arrangement you need for water and number five hydrogen sulfide H2S. Methane is number four, CH4. So you'd have one carbon and four hydrogens. Use your previous task one as a guide of how to see your arrangement. Pause the video, have a go. Task three, you need to complete the dot cross diagram for oxygen. I've already started by drawing out the two outer electrons and I have drawn out the individual atoms of oxygen. It's in group six, so it has six electrons. You need to look where you need to put your lone pairs of electrons and the pairs that you already have. Pause the video, have a go. So you've drawn some examples of dot cross diagrams. They are not the only way we can represent covalent bonding. And on your screen, you can see the nitrogen and the hydrogen chloride dot cross diagrams. Another version, another way of showing it is called displayed formulas. This is where we just use the element symbols and lines. Each individual line represents a covalent bond. So nitrogen, you can see there's three lines between the two nitrogen atoms. We know that nitrogen has a triple bond. Three lines, three bonds. Hydrogen chloride only has one shared pair of electrons. So there's only one covalent bond. So that is shown by just a single line between the two element symbols. Another way of showing covalent bonding is 3D models and ball and stick models. So on the left, you can see a ball and stick model of a hydrocarbon. We have the one type of atom in the middle, which is the dark gray. Then we have the bonds you can see with the sticks. And then at the end of those bonds, you can see four individual circles. And these are the other type of atom, the other type of element that's in that molecule. A 3D molecule, you can see here we've got a molecule, could be water, could be hydrogen sulfide, where we've got one red atom in the middle, so that's one element, and we've got two small atoms at the bottom. That's going to be the same type of element. So your final task is to draw displayed formulas for the following molecules. So displayed formulas are the representation with just the lines in, 
not the 3D models. So you need to draw the displayed formulas for the following molecules. Hydrogen, H2. Chlorine, Cl2. Water, H2O. Methane, CH4. Hydrogen sulfide, H2S. Ammonia, NH3. And oxygen, O2. Pause the video. Have a go at this. So that was your final task. Send your answers for all of the four tasks. Thank you very much for listening.